Okay. Okay, now let's do the this one. Okay. Uh, can you confirm me that you can see the screen, my screen? Uh, Simon or Ruth, please activate your microphone and tell me if you can see the, the screen. My screen. Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Okay, I, I will put it now in, I'll make it now uh, full screen. Let's see if it works. Now you can see the full screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, very good. So I thought, okay, very good, finally. Okay, let's see if it moves. So we have uh, the conference, it's, as you already know, API therapy against Lyme disease. We have uh, the B products around. This uh, bad, bad things like, like here, we have the tick, we have here Borrelia. And here is one of the manifestations uh, which is present after the infection is the so-called Red Bull eye. Uh, I have had myself uh, a few times this kind of reaction after I was uh, uh, bitten by, by tick. So I've got also Borrelia, but I succeed to, to go through without any problem. And one of the method was to put bee stings like north, south, east, west, around the, the, this Red Bull uh, eye, and also to put a lot of propolis. But um, first of all, I'd like to start with um, my big thank you to my good friends from Australia, Simon and Ruth Chadburn. They have a, a farm, a company near Brisbane, and they are very passionate about AP therapy too. They travel to Europe, to Germany. They came also to my epitherapy clinic in Romania near Bucharest. And I am very grateful for their help. So they organized all the technical part with announcing the people and so on. So um, uh, you received this message from them. And uh, 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 they are located, as I told you, in Australia, near the Brisbane on the Golden Coast. And they have a wonderful farm. And uh, not only that, but they made there inside a bee house, uh, uh, which is also an apitherapy house. And uh, it's uh, newly built. And they have inside also uh, the method, the famous method already made in uh, Austria, then in Germany, and now all over the world about beehive air therapy. And they use the best system which is uh, now available in, in Germany. Okay, and uh, let's uh, look uh, uh, further. So if you want to contact Simon and Ruth, uh, please go to their website first, and then you can send them email and uh, come in contact with them. A few words about my location. Uh, I am located here in Romania, near the Black Sea coast. Romania is on the East Europe. This is Europe, Eastern Europe. And uh, I am near Bucharest, near the airport of Bucharest. Here is a schema of uh, my area. We are located here in Mereni, my center, very close to my center. It's Yone, Yone's Clinic, uh, where uh, Simon and Ruth also stayed uh, for a week when they, we got the uh, workshop on happy therapies uh, before the COVID-19. This is my small, small home and it's a, bee human home. This is the bee house and this is the human house. And uh, uh, the bees, they are uh, orienting themselves to their place uh, following these colors. We have plenty of uh, good wildlife around us and a lot of bee plants. And also we planted in our garden a lot of bee plants. This is my library, one of the libraries, and it's full of app therapy books, uh, journals, uh, CDs, DVDs, uh, and so on and so on. And here again is the, the clinic here, Yone's clinic near us. You have here the coordinates in case you'd like to come later to Romania too. Here I started to learn about therapy in 1991 in Bucharest. This is the Apitherapy Center. It's still running after how many years? Over 30 years. And uh, it has several departments, including a pharmacy. And it's really uh, the first apitherapy center in the world. It was uh, activated in uh, 1973. 
And uh, here is, uh, th thanks to the bees, I I've got a chance to travel in many countries. So I've been to over 50 countries. And here is one photo uh, done in uh, France uh, of uh, some of the participants. And here is my very good friend, Claudette Renal Cartabas uh, from France. Uh, I wrote together with her uh, this book, Un bon santé avec les abeilles, and also uh, in good health with the bees. And also, uh, I just finished a couple of months ago another book on Lyme disease. Uh, it's also in French. And here are two of my books in German. Here again, Claudette and me. Uh, uh, in Bucharest, we have a uh, center which is uh, teaching the doctors. Uh, there are postgraduate courses. So after they finish their faculties, their stages, they, they can come also to be specialized in apitherapy, phytotherapy, and aromatherapy. And we have for now over uh, 500 uh, medical doctors which are uh, licensed in api aromatherapy. So short conclusion on myself, I love bees. <laughs> Just like that, like all of you, I hope some of you which do not have yet uh, direct connection with the bees, they will uh, get a few bee colonies and they will start also in beekeeping because api therapy uh, without bees, it's of course uh, not uh, the best uh, idea. So as I said, I, I, I made a book, another book on Lyme disease and apitherapy with Claudette. And uh, we are waiting for somebody to help us with the translation from French to English. So if you know anybody, just let us know. Okay, main topics of this short introductory lecture on apitherapy against Lyme disease. Um, you have it here. Let's go one by one. What is Lyme disease? You wrote, of course, a lot of this. Here you have only just a definition of Lyme disease from Wikipedia, which says that it's an infectious disease, like many other infections. It's caused by Borrelia bacterium. There are many types of Borrelia, which are spread by the ticks. And uh, the ticks can be transported by various animals. And it goes usually with a rash, and it's known also as erythema migrans. Migrans means moving. Uh, so here is uh, um, one important uh, part of the diagnostic in uh, Lyme disease, is that the symptoms of the patients usually move. Today it's in one, one place, and the next day maybe in another place. So this mobility of the symptoms, it's one of characteristics of Lyme disease because the symptoms are where the Borrelia are active. So when the Borrelia move to the head, uh, you may get a headache. If they move to the joints, then you may have uh, joint pains and so on and so on, or heart problems. Okay, so uh, despite the appropriate treatment, about 10 to 20% of people develop joint pains, memory problems, tiredness uh, for at least six months. Okay, so a few words about the treatment protocols in Western medicine. Unfortunately, if you look to the treatment protocols, it's like 95% antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. Uh, the, the actual treatment protocol in most of the clinics, not all of them, it's really uh, not enough. Uh, why an antibiotic is usually not enough? Well, a few reasons here. The infection goes unnoticed and the Borrelias have enough time to hide inside the body to make the so-called biofilms, like we have uh, almost all of us a biofilm in the mouth with the, uh, the, that biofilm, which is with calcium and full of bacteria and so on between our teeth and in deep tissues like joints. So if the uh, uh, ticks has bitten us, we didn't notice uh, and the tick were infected with Borrelia, the Borrelia enter into the body and it has had enough time to hide in the body, in the deep tissues, then the antibiotics cannot do anything. Uh, they are useless. Another thing is that the actual antibiotics are non-specific. They destroy all kinds of microorganisms, including useful ones, like the ones from our guts, our microbiome or microbioma. When, when you de destroy the microbioma, then uh, uh, the immune system goes down. So uh, the few uh, bacteria, Borrelia, which are still there in the body, they'll be reactivated once the immune system is very low. 
then as you all know, many pathogen bacteria can develop resistance to antibiotics, can infect the body, lower the immune system, and expose the body to new infections caused by Borrelia. So a few words about nutrition and Lyme disease. Uh, get the nutrients that are missing in your body. So this is very important. Uh, you need to ask your local specialist in nutrition. Uh, go to several ones uh, uh, to get more, uh, more information. And uh, then how to know what nutrients are missing in your body. Normally the nutritionist should tell you, okay, you are lacking vitamin D or C after they make blood analysis, blood tests, or they use some other methods. One other method, which is very simple, very easy, is to ask your own body uh, and to feel your body. Uh, basically, it's what uh, uh, is happening with the pregnant women when they have a, a baby inside their uterus. Uh, they feel what nutrients are needed, what foods are needed to feed the baby. So they have those uh, famous uh, desires for certain foods like for sour foods or for sweet food or sometimes spicy food. So because their body knows what is missing. Basically, when you are missing a certain substance like magnesium, when you, you feel it that it, magnesium is present in a certain uh, food, like in chocolate, you love that chocolate. So the body will tell you, OK, I, I need chocolate uh, because it's full of magnesium. But if you have enough magnesium in your body, then uh, uh, your body will say, OK, I, I don't need for the moment uh, chocolate. So just listen to the body. It's, it's one of the good uh, methods. OK. And then uh, in very, very short, uh, another thing is, which is uh, this thing is valid for the whole, uh, all other kind of diseases. Choose only baby food. Uh, which is like young food, young food, baby food. What do I mean by young food? I need, I, I mean foods which are from the biological point of view, young ones, like the sprouts uh, of the vegetables, like the bee pollen from the flowers, like the eggs, like the rose from the fish, uh, like the roots, the very, very young roots of a, of a, of a vegetable plant. So anything which is young, very young, uh, it's, uh, it's better in quality, in nutrients than uh, no old food. Old food is like meat, like cheese, uh, conserved, conserved foods, it's old food. Or if you look to a vegetable, um, the, the leaves and the stems of the vegetables are usually old cells, are old tissues. So they are not so good like the, the fruits or the, the, uh, the uh, sprouts, the gems and the, the roots, very fresh roots. Okay. Then of course the food must be very fresh. Then according to the nutritionists in the last years, the best diet is the one which is whole foods, vegetarian based diet. Uh, let me uh, tell you a few ideas here. Whole foods means for example, to eat the tomatoes as they are and not uh, tomato juice, uh, just the food as it is. In some cases, in the beginning of the, the treatment, if your Borrelia, Borreliosis, your Lyme disease is very severe, you can uh, get these vegetables, whole foods, and mix them in a mixer. Uh, and then you'll get like, like a cream, like a soup, which is in cream form, and which will be like a baby food. So basically, in order to not lose uh, energy by uh, uh, by uh, masticating by chewing your uh, uh, solid foods you use the that mixer to to make the kind of baby food like a, uh, like a cream okay now uh, let's go to the behind products against Lyme disease uh, there is one concept i will tell you a bit later which says that uh, in order to, to get good results, we need to use all beehive products, ideally, uh, in the treatment of any disease, including Lyme disease. So what are these bee products? Honey, which is floral honey. We all of us, we know about honey. Then it's another kind of honey, which is honeydew honey, 
uh, not so much known in uh, non-European uh, areas, but um, uh, the honeydew honey is richer in minerals and polyphenols than the floral honeys. So ask your specialists, your local beekeepers on how to get also this kind of honey. Then propolis, uh, it's fantastic for uh, Lyme disease. Uh, beehive air sustains also the lungs. So we can get the, directly the air from the bee colony, from the beehive directly to the lungs. And the beehive air is full of volatiles, uh, which are useful for the health of the lungs inside. So uh, the volatiles have also antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory, and so on and so on. So uh, it's a good idea to get this kind of method too. Beeswax can be used also in apitherapy in the treatment protocols. Um, is uh, because uh, uh, beeswax can, can uh, absorb a lot of heat. And uh, as you see, we need heat in the treatment of Lyme disease. Borrelia cannot resist to more than 42.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, in Germany, there is one clinic which is doing hyperthermia, like the patient stays in, uh, in a special device which creates a controlled uh, high temperature, which the body can resist with a lot of sensors. It's basically what the Russians are doing also in Siberia or the Finnish people from Finland are doing too. So keep in mind that Borrelia cannot resist to more than 42.56 degrees Celsius. So any, any form of heat which comes in contact with them is usually uh, useful. Then we have royal jelly. Royal jelly is very famous because it, it has wonderful micronutrients. It has telomerase, which is good for regeneration. And it has all kinds of substances which allows the uh, fast regeneration of the white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. But in the case of Lyme disease, we are interested in the regeneration of the white blood cells, leukocytes, lymphocytes, and so on and so on. Because in the battle between the immune system and the Borrelia, uh, uh, there are many casualties of many uh, white blood cells are dying in this battle. But if they are replenished, they are regenerated fast, fast enough, then uh, step by step, uh, the immune system will win the battle. So royal gel is very important. Now here is apilar nil drawn larvae, uh, which is good because it is full of stem cells too, which allows the regeneration in a controlled manner. It has also a lot of nutrients. It is easier to produce in larger quantities than royal jelly. So ask your local beekeepers about how to get the uh, AP larnil, drone larvae uh, triturate or extract if you want. Then we have here bee pollen and bee bread. So bee pollen, which is collected by the bees from the flowers, it contains telomerase. Telomerase is that enzyme extremely important for the youth of our cells. And um, it can be found in young foods, like I told you before, in the sprouts, in the, in the eggs, and so on and so on. And um, uh, bee pollen, once it is inside the bee colony, it uh, is um, uh, transformed by the bees with the help of um, their saliva, their acids, and their lactobacillus into bee bread. And finally, we have the famous bee venom. So the bee venom is um, very good because the bee venom activates the, the blood flow, activates the immune system directly. It's a very powerful stimulator of the immu uh, immune system and the nervous system. And because it activates the blood flow, it eliminates easier the residues which are uh, created by the, the Borrelia because these residues, these toxins are uh, more aggressive even than Borrelia themselves. But we, if you flush them out, then uh, the symptoms, the pains and so on uh, diminish a lot. And also bee venom gives the chest uh, to the body to be better oxygenated because bee venom, as I said, activates the blood flow. And if it's enough oxygen in the lungs and in the blood, this oxygen will come to all the tissues, including the ones where Borrelia is present, and more oxygen there will diminish the pain, the acute kind of pain. Okay, so basically we need all these B products in the treatment protocols. Now about the doses, 
it depends on the patient. Uh, every treatment must be individualized. And uh, we will discuss a bit about this a bit later. Now, acupuncture points for treating Lyme disease. There is no, uh, let's say, uh, automatic or uh, uh, it's not a template or a standard formula for the acupuncture points because, um, uh, as uh, you already know, Borrelia moves all over in the body. So you need to, to come as close as possible to them. But of course, there are some, some points which are having a general effect on the body, like this one, which is very, very good. Susan Lee, stomach 36. Here also is this one, large intestine 10 and large intestine 11. Then here on the back, it's uh, governing vessel 4, which is here in this area. And uh, then on the uh, uh, urinary bladder, you have the urinary bladder meridian you can uh, stimulate help the ones which are related to the internal organs which looks more uh, affected by the borreliosis uh, there is another um, uh, method very very intuitive and very simple one which is based on the fact that once an acupuncture point which is related to a certain disease for example this one here uh, gallbladder 38 this point when a person a lady usually has a migraine uh, this point becomes very, very painful. So, uh, so, and each disease, each organ, each tissue almost is related to a certain point. If we have problem with the kidneys, this uh, point here, urinary bladder 23 will become active. If we have problems with the adrenal glands, this one will become very active, which means we'll become sensitive to pressure. So, and uh, it's not only this direction from the internal organ to the uh, acupuncture point, but also vice versa from the point to the internal organ or tissue or function. So basically, whenever an acupuncture point is painful to pressure, it is a good idea to stimulate this point. And you can stimulate this point with many methods. It can be uh, with the fingers, you do like acupressure, the so-called acupressure. In Japan, they are doing shiatsu. In China, they do so also acupressure. Then uh, you can apply here a moksa, which is a, a method to, to heat, uh, the, to warm up the, the point. And uh, you can apply also magnets, laser, electricity uh, for electrotherapy. Basically, any kind of method can be used to stimulate these points. But ask your local acupuncturist for more details than for uh, specific advices on how to do it. Once uh, the, the internal organ uh, or the tissue or the function is balanced, is okay, then this point is not any more painful. So this is a good sign for you that you are on the right track, okay? And uh, here you may notice if you know a bit acupuncture, I selected those parts of the body which are uh, the so-called young parts. We have the yin part, which is the internal part, like here on the calves, and the yang part is the kind of more uh, dynamic energy, more tonus. And um, uh, it, in bee venom therapy, it is uh, not so well to start with the yin parts of the body because here the skin is softer, it's whiter usually, and it's uh, more sensitive to the very, very strong bee venom. So it's a good idea to start here on this lower back, on the Mingman, on the governing vessel four. And then you move slowly, slowly from the, this center, like this one, like it's the center of the body. Then you move slowly, slowly to other acupuncture points. And then you reach uh, further, further points like on the calves or on the forearms here. Okay, so rules and principles of prevention of Lyme. Uh, let me go through this one too. First step is to get a detailed diagnosis at all levels. And here we have the level of uh, physical level, material level, then we have the energetical level, then we have uh, the psycho-emotional level. Then step two is get a detailed list with all causes of the causes which brought uh, the disease to you. And these causes, maybe not only the common ones which you know from your doctors like bacteria, uh, or co-infections, but it may be also other causes like emotional causes, which 
indirectly they turn down your immune system. We know already that depression or fear uh, decreases at least 50% the immune system. Okay, then, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, then a uh, third step is to start with detox, then use medicinal herbs. Uh, the medicinal herbs are uh, acting faster than the B products usually. So uh, ask a specialist in phytotherapy to tell you what are the best medicinal herbs. And uh, then step five, change your diet and your lifestyle. Without doing this, uh, you cannot really heal uh, Lyme disease uh, because the diet is fundamental for the immune system and also your lifestyle. The, the most important part in lifestyle is to have a good sleep. Okay, uh, uh, Ruth, I see that uh, I hear <laughs> there is some microphone open. So please, please check. Uh, who left the microphone open. Uh, please be sure to, to close all your microphones except uh, Ruth and uh, Simon. Okay, steps number six, add the beehive products in large enough quantity. So here, do not worry because of the quantity. Uh, if you take enough water, you can take really large amount of beehive products. It is not like in the case of uh, medicinal drugs which uh, uh, can have bad, uh, big problems if you take too much. So uh, the beehive products are uh, also foods, most of them, and we can take more or less foods uh, depending uh, on what we need. And of course, if we use, uh, we take enough water before, during, or after. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We have somebody here which is uh no, is it? Out. Yeah, it, it was somebody from it's Romania. Not, uh, it's all muted. It's all muted now? Okay. Yes, all muted. Okay. Okay, let, let's continue then. Uh, let's reactivate the share screen. Okay. Okay, so can you see the share, share, my share screen? Uh, yes. Yes, good. Yeah. Okay, so um, a big secret, uh, as I said, is to take beehive products in large amounts and to take enough water before, well, 10 minutes uh, before you take the bee products, uh, drink a half a glass of water at body temperature and uh, ideally to, to be absorbed faster. And then uh, after the stomach mucosa is hydrated with the water, then uh, you can take the B product. First of all, you keep it under the tongue as long as possible, two, three minutes, and then you swallow the product. Now, a very, very important point in fighting Lyme disease, like in the case of COVID-19 too, is to keep a distance the co-infections because uh, the other infections which are attacking the body are uh, lowering the power of the immune system. And of course, uh, the immune system will not be able to, uh, to fight the Borrelia, which are very, very fearful. Uh, they are reditable, they are powerful, aggressive bacteria. So uh, how to keep uh, a distance the co-infections? By having that, one, uh, very, that good diet, uh, whole foods, uh, vegetarian-based diet, or with a lot of bee products and essential oils like aromatherapy, can be used and also you can use from time to time antibiotics, but together with propolis and the products. And also you can use uh, antivirals for a short time to fight uh, these uh, my bad microorganisms. Uh, there are studies which are show, saying that when you combine antibiotics or antivirals, classical ones from the pharma industry with natural antibiotics, natural antivirals, the results are, uh, are very good. Uh, but you must uh, take care about the adverse reactions caused by the antibiotics or the antivirals. So the treatment protocol must be very well designed by your local doctors. Now, if, if point number eight is keep all cells in the body happy. All cells, all tissues, all organs, which are living, of course, must be happy. Uh, because if the whole body is happy, then the Borrelia has not much chance to survive there. And keep in mind that uh, when, let's say, 100 people are uh, if infected with Borrelia after they are uh, bitten by a tick, 
Uh, not all of them, they make the infections. Some say it's 5%, some 15, some 20%. So why not all of the people which are stung are bitten by the ticks are not making the disease? Because the cells in their bodies are happy, their immune system is happy, blood flow is good, nervous system is good. So finally, the immune system and the rest of the body will eliminate the Borrelia. So this is a very, very important point. And now I will uh, tell you in detail how to make these cells happy, because if you uh, know how to make the cells happy, then the, the, the treatment will be much uh, better and you'll get better results. So what needs our body to be happy and thus healthy? Uh, I made this kind of uh, uh, strategy many years ago, and uh, I published this in the French book. So how, for instance, how is the human body made? We have the organs, the systems, the organs, the tissues, the cells, and uh, we have then the uh, three-dimensional model of the human being. You, you know all about this. And uh, if you would uh, condense all this into this kind of pyramid, we have the matter, which is the heaviest. Then we have the energy, we have the function, or this part is an ergo-functional part of our being, then we have the mind, the emotions, and the spirit. And all these levels are important for our health. So if you have a bad uh, diet, you will affect your matter. Bad diet means too much or too less food, or uh, good quality or poor quality. The energy is not only the energy from inside of your body, but also the energy outside of your body. So if you stay into an area where it's too much energy, like too hot, uh, you stay in Sahara and you are not having enough water, then you get in problem. If you are very healthy, but you go to the Everest, the Himalaya mountains, there is extremely cold. So uh, the lack of energy will cause you also big problems. Then the function of the cells and function of the tissues and so on, it's also very important. But to learn more about this, stick with the uh, doctors, the professor, specialists, in physiology, which is the functioning of the cells of the human body too, uh, because you need to keep the functions of the body, all function of the body as healthy as possible. So don't think only to the function of the immune system, but also the, on the function of all the other systems. Because let me give you just a simple example, the immune system, the white blood cells in order to arrive to the area, areas where the Borrelia are located, they need to travel, and in order to travel inside the body, they need a good blood flow and a good lymphatic flow. So they need basically that the lymph and the blood are more fluid uh, uh, to, to, to travel fast. Okay, then the mind and the spirit, uh, of course, depends on the lifestyle and uh, on many other things. Uh, but basically, a good uh, sleep and good meditation and relaxation all the techniques which can relax the mind uh, will uh, uh, consume less oxygen in the brain, and then this oxygen will be available for the rest of the body for the immune system. So this is the, the structure. Now, in and yang, you see, you know about this. Let uh, me speak about this too, because when we treat the Lyme disease, we need to take into account this, this uh, concept. And here we have uh, yang is this part which is more related to the energy and yin is the black part which is more related to the matter and uh, then um, a few ideas about the uh, uh, Wu-Sing, the five elements theory and api therapy which I launched in 1991. Uh, a few words about traditional Chinese medicine, more than 2,500 years of history. Uh, it is recognized among the alternative medicine, complementary medicines, uh, they use a lot of medicinal herbs in China, a lot of the foods. Basically, almost every Chinese person knows that a certain food is good for a certain organ, and they are using the foods as medicines. Okay, then they practice this famous Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan, uh, which is very, very healthy, very good for the body, mind, and soul. Then uh, they have also many practices of meditation and acupuncture, the famous acupuncture too. So uh, uh, also they can combine acupuncture with moxa. This is a form of hitting the acupuncture points. And by the way, in my opinion, moxa is better than the acupuncture 
because uh, moxa brings energy into the body. And usually the patients with uh, Lyme disease, they have lack of energy into the body. So uh, the acupuncture points, sometimes they can uh, take out more than uh, necessary uh, the energy and they may cause problems in the hands of acupuncturists, which are not very well uh, taught, let's say. Then there are the old methods of, from Chinese medicine too, uh, of uh, acupressure and massage, uh, like shiatsu in, in uh, Japanese uh, culture. And then we have the, this uh, method which extracts uh, through vacuum, uh, the bad blood, which is under the skin, and then uh, uh, causes lesions under the skin. And this activates the production of stem cells. And with the stem cells, it comes, it comes to regeneration on these tissues. Okay, so that method is called cupping. Okay, why is it so important? Because if you uh, do this, you can uh, uh, have less use of medicinal uh, drugs. Uh, the yin and yang and the Wusing theories are excellent mnemonic methods, like to memorize uh, about steps you need to do into the diagnostic, into the prophylaxis or the treatment phase. And uh, mnemonic means uh, it's an acronym like uh, these letters, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, like the colors of the rainbow. Okay, and um, uh, it helps you to learn new languages. And now let's see more details about yin and yang. Uh, the day is yang, the night is yin, uh, yang and yin. Here it's uh, 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 the day with the sun, and here is the water, which is cold, which is the yin. Again, here, the part of the, our earth during the day, it's, it comes more light rays from the sun. So it's hotter, warmer. This is the yang part of the day, and here is the night, the yin part of the 24 hours. Heat and cold, the fire is yang, the cold, the ice here is cold, it's yin. Then again, cold and hot. And uh, in practice, in, uh, to treat many, many diseases, we use either the ice, like in the case of sport injuries. Maybe you noticed in the, the sport, the football and so on, when a, a sport, uh, sportman is uh, injured, the, the doctor or the messages, they come very quickly with special sprays to cool down the tissue, which was uh, 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 damaged by the trauma. So, and it causes a lot of heat, local heat. And also we can use the heat in those diseases uh, or which affect certain organs or tissues where is not enough heat. So we can bring heat from outside to, to improve the function of that tissue. So again, yang and yin here. Uh, that's why in winter we use this protection <laughs> against the cold and it's good to have good uh, clothes to protect against the cold. Uh, then hot and cold colors. These are the young colors, uh, the warm colors, red, orange, yellow. And these are the yin colors. So it's interesting also in iridology, in irid iridodiagnostic, iridodiagnostic to, to, to see about these colors, which are different from person to person. So yin is black, is the lack of any color or light. Black is lack of any color or light. And the young white is all colors combined. Okay, now a few more uh, examples, high pressure and low pressure. When it's a uh, high pressure in the nature, we have a nice time. It's uh, good weather, uh, we are happy. When it's a low pressure, it's like a vacuum, uh, we do not feel well. So this is the young part, this is the yin part of the weather. And here you see also the same uh, schema when it's high pressure here, it goes to the low pressure here, the wind. And uh, then, uh, okay, uh, I, uh, I will go through. Uh, blood pressure, high blood pressure means young, low blood pressure means in. Uh, up and down, usually up is young, is the sky, is the sun, and down is the in part, the earth. And here's the upper part of the body, like the head. It's a lot of yang in this area. That's why it's not a good idea to start with bivenom therapy with these things on the head because it's only a lot of energy there. And bivenom comes with more energy. So you may get adverse reactions. 
and here is the in part of the body. Here also, you should not start directly with these things here because uh, these areas are very cold normally and the blood flow is very diminished here. And uh, then the venom is more aggressive, will uh, destroy more cells and it, it will cause more swelling, more edema, and the people will not uh, come anymore to the treatments. Also in and young, like external part of the body, it's young and the internal part is in. So um, some people, they see, oh, I am heavy. I have a lot of energy. Uh, yes and no, uh, you have more in energy because you have a lot of weight, but the people which are thinner, they are much more dynamic. They have more young in comparison with the yin inside their body. So they are more dynamic. Young and yin, uh, when you look to the body, like external part is yang and internal part is the yin part. And in uh, the physiology of the body, the uh, metabolism, catabolism is the yang part, is the red part, catabolism, which is active during the day. And anabolism is active during the night. Uh, regeneration, uh, recovery, cell division, uh, repa repairs of the tissues and so on, they are done during the anabolism during the in phase. Okay, now in and yang and the beehive products, this is important to, to memorize. Uh, usually, uh, and here in the case of bee venom, it's clearly the bee venom activates the blood flow. It creates a heat, where, uh, local heat when we use it on the skin. And the propolis is the antidote of the bee venom. It's cooling down. Propolis is very rich in polyphenols. And the polyphenols are, uh, or the bioflavonoids, if you want, they are anti-inflammatory. And uh, see here, when we apply bee venom, these things or injections on the skin, the skin becomes red. And propolis, when it's a trauma, like this lady from Germany, she got a trauma in Ireland, she got inflammation, then you can put the propolis quickly to, to block, to diminish this inflammation. Uh, also here is young, so, and honey, which is heavy, is sweet, uh, it is anti-inflammatory, honey is in, in comparison with the young of the bee venom. So whenever you have inflammations in the body or on the skin or on the tissues like wounds, inflamed wounds, honey is fantastic because it has this kind of in property. You see also here, like in the wounds, inflammations, burns is typically, honey is excellent to, to heal the burns much faster than the classical medicine. Okay, what is Wuxing? Wuxing are the five elements, the symbols from Chinese medicine, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. And uh, each of these elements is related to internal organs, internal tissues, to various functions, colors, uh, but also related to the uh, fruits, uh, foods, cereals, animals, and so on and so on. Basically, everything in the universe can be ordered accord to, according to this five elements theory. And uh, uh, they, there are two big, big rules here, two big laws of uh, the five elements is the law of uh, generation or the mother-son law, which says that the wood uh, helps the fire, the fire makes uh, uh, ash which goes into the earth and earth becomes richer. The earth, because of the big, big gravitation inside, presses the substances and creates the minerals. Metals under fire becomes liquid and nourishes the water, like mineral water is better than uh, usually than uh, uh, still water. And then the water, the rain, the clouds, and so on, the rain helps the wood, and the wood again continues to do this. This is the cycle called mother-son cycle, generation cycle, but if only this cycle will be active, then we'll have a kind of explosion. Uh, basically, there is another law, which is the dominance law, which says that the water blocks the fire, fire blocks the metal, or dominates the metal, metal dominates the wood, wood dominates the earth, and Earth, the continents, for example, dominates the oceans. So uh, you know, for an element to be in good shape, uh, both laws, the mother-son law and the domination law should be active. For example, the wood to be in balance, it needs water, which is the mother of wood, uh, symbolistically speaking, of course, and uh, it needs also control with the metal because uh, if the wood grows too much, uh, the metal comes and cut the wood and uh, keeps the balance. Uh, here, uh, the metal is also dryness. 
dryness uh, is uh, of course inhibiting the growth of the plants. Okay, and then here the correlation with inside the, the tissues, the functions like spring, wind, ice, sour, like the taste of the foods, ligaments and tendons about the tissues, emotions like anger, and so on. So for each, each of these elements, you find a, a lot of details, and it's really fascinating to, to study about the Wusing because you will understand better your body, your functioning, and how to treat uh, people of various diseases. Now, as I said, there, for each element, there is an organ, a deep organ, a parenchymatous organ, or a, a junk organ, like they say in Chinese. Uh, this is the liver, which belongs to the wood element, the heart and the brain and the blood vessels, they be belong to the fire element. The pancreas, the stomach, the, this part of duodenum, first part belongs to the earth element. And here is also connective tissue. And by the way, the Borrelia hides into the connective tissue. Then we have the lungs or the breathing, which is also related to the immune system, to protection, to the skin. Uh, and uh, they are very, very important for the immune system. The immune system needs huge amounts of oxygen. And if the lungs are not uh, very good, like somebody has asthma or bronchitis, or is just depressed and breathes slower, lower, uh, then not enough oxygen will be available for the immune system. And this belongs to the metal element. Uh, kidney, urinary bladder, the bones, the teeth, uh, belongs to the water element. And uh, here is also the young part of the yin. Here on top is the adrenal glands. So in order to make happy the immune system, we need that we have all these organs in very good shape, good structure, good functioning. Here are the tissues, which belong also to the five elements. Uh, the senses, the tongue, the hearing, the eyesight, uh, the mouth, the nose, the smelling, okay? And now the relationship with the beehive products. If you look and you study a bit Chinese medicine, uh, you will uh, look to the properties of these bee products according to the Chinese medicine, to the theories of energy, to the yin, yang, wu, sing, and so on you will have this kind of uh, relationship. And I found, happily, I found this uh, relationship in 1991. Then I have presented to many, many congresses. And uh, basically, if we want to treat the liver, for example, remember the liver is here, the best product is B pollen. If we want to improve the fertility, the cell division, we need to get uh, to this area to stimulate the water elements and the best is royal jelly and so on. So the propolis is very good for the metal element, for the lungs, immune system. Honey is the energy for the earth and uh, bee venom is energy for all the young systems in the body, especially the nervous system, endocrine system uh, is special. Now, uh, a, a bit of theory too, again, about this, uh, the colors, like this is in color and then more and more young colors. Okay, and then again, this one, I made it and then solid to gas. So you can bring in to young if you put enough warmness, enough heat into the system. If you have enough heat on the ice cube, it will turn to liquid. And if it's enough uh, heat, then it will go to vapors. So same is in our body. If we want to have more heat, it's good to drink tea, herbal tea, but even normal water at body temperature or a bit higher, ideally, like 40, 42 degrees Celsius will bring more energy to the body. Okay, so I'll pass on this. You can study this in uh, the video recording later. Okay, so now about the cells, the structure of the cells, you know that the cell is like a, an organism in itself. The, the cell, it has lungs, liver, like the mitochondria. It has like stomach inside. It has like kidneys. And every cell makes uh, caca and pipi, and uh, it creates toxins. And these toxins must be eliminated in a very fast way uh, through a good blood flow and a good lymphatic flow. So uh, the cells are really sensitive. And here is the model I propose to you to study. In order to make happy, smiling the cells, you need all these categories. If any of these categories is missing, you cannot hear. For example, if there is not enough hygiene, 
not only on the skin or on the teeth in the mouth, but also hygiene at the cellular level in the cell and around the cell. For example, there are too many toxins, residues, uh, and so on. Then uh, you cannot heal uh, Lyme disease or any other disease, or the healing will be very short time. It will not last. So you need to do the detox. You need enough water. Too much water is also not good, but uh, enough water until the urine becomes uh, transparent, like uh, water uh, is, has no color, just a bit yellowish. Then it's a, it's a good sign that you are well hydrated. And of course, your doctors will tell you if you are uh, well hydrated or not. Relaxation, the cell division, reproduction, the oxygen, the air, the protection, which needs order and discipline. Okay, and all these categories must be simultaneous, non stop at all levels, in perfect quantity and quality, in harmony with the environment. Nutrition, it's also extremely important. And here is the young part of this schema, which is information, coordination, communication, interconnectivity between the cells and the tissues, the love, friendship, energy, activity, exercise, and so on. And the reason to live. By the way, there are studies which says that uh, the optimistic people are uh, living longer and better than pessimistic ones. So always uh, uh, motivate yourself to live longer, to help your family members, your neighbors, your friends, and so on. Okay, so these are these categories. And how do we fulfill these categories? Nutrition, we can help with a good uh, nutrition uh, uh, strategic protocol. If you want, you need to go to the nutritionist. Very good specialists in nutrition are specialists in Ayurveda, also in traditional Chinese medicine. Because nutrition ensures the structure of the body, of the cells, but also uh, it, it provides a lot of energy. Second main source of energy comes from the oxygen, from the air, from the iron ions, for example. And here you need very good lungs. Best treatments of the lungs. There are specialists in uh, respiratory exercises, but also very, very good are the one specialist in pranayama from India, the practitioners of yoga, of hatha yoga, they are very good specialists in pranayama, which is basically a methodology to, to help the lungs to, to function better. Then uh, here for protection, uh, you need to speak with the immunologist, how to protect the body and the immune system. For the discipline, you need to speak with the psychotherapist. And here is the water nephrologist, the specialist in kidney, for example, can help you. For relaxation, you need also a psychotherapist, a specialist in meditation, in prayers, and so on and so on. And uh, for detox, there are many good books on how to detox the body until the cellular level. And there are many methods to detox the body, depending on the problem inside. If the kidney are affected, you use more uh, detoxing uh, medicine, which are going to the kidneys. If the liver is affected, then you use use other uh, uh, remedies to help the liver and so on and so on. Regeneration or repairs can be helped also by geneticians. Uh, nowadays, they, they started to, to uh, find ways to regenerate the cells better by improving the chromosomes. And here, this part is with the psychologist, especially, and the specialist in Ayurveda, in Tai Chi Chuan, in Qigong, uh, all these people which are specialists in energies. Okay, so uh, here is, let, let's speak a bit about the, the systems. I, I told you about uh, before, we have here now the wordings too. Okay, the tissues, again, the tongue. Okay, the functional level. So here is uh, like uh, the structure was the liver itself, but the function is regeneration. And we know that the liver is very, very, uh, able to, to regenerate. Even if you take 90% of the liver out, if you have still 10% functional, this 10% will regenerate to 100%. So when you, whenever you uh, need regeneration, think to the liver. When you want to eliminate toxins, water-soluble toxins, think to the kidneys. When you want to eliminate fat-soluble toxins, think to the liver. Breathing is the lungs, nutrition here, blood and lymph flow here. I insist a bit the lymph flow, because if the lymph flow is uh, low, uh, if the lymph is uh, dense, 
uh, it's like because of dehydration or because if we eat, we eat foods which are increasing the thickness of the lymph, the Borrelia will be very happy. Borrelia likes uh, coldness. They like also uh, mucilaginous tissues. They like the flag. They like the uh, this kind of uh, uh, sticky uh, liquids because uh, they can hide better against the antibiotics or and also against the immune system there. And then they can do their life cycle better in that area. So the blood and leaf should be very fluid or enough fluid. Okay, okay, so I go through the tastes. Okay, so again, this uh, cytoplasm. Okay, and oxygen and nutrients repairs maintenance. Yeah, here I have a good example with um, the maintenance. You know, there are very rich people which have this kind of vintage cars and a couple of times per year, they are very proud. They go, they make a kind of show or they go on the cities, they block the, the traffic and then they uh, show their vintage cars. And the question is, how come a vintage car, which is maybe 100 years old, can look so nice and it's still functional because they do the repairs. They do very often good repairs. They replace the parts of the car and they make a very good maintenance. Same principle is, a, is valid in biology. If our cells are well maintained, when there are errors, problems like uh, lesions, micro lesions because of the free radicals, for example, then if we come with antioxidants quickly, we block the free radicals and the free radicals will not reach the nucleus to make damages into the chromosomes. So maintenance is very important. Okay. And then what is here? Regeneration of the cells, energy, functionality targets, good information. Yes, it's also very, very important for the immune system and nervous system. And here is one principle I love a lot, which is one for all and all for one from, you know, D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan was, uh, uh, helped by these other guys, and uh, he was helping all the other guys. So it's uh, teamwork, practically. Together, everyone achieves more. <laughs> and this uh, principle applies to the cells is together, all cells in the body, uh, if are happy, they achieve more. So uh, no, do not forget to make all the cells happy with all I told you before. Friendship, respect, love information coordination. Inside the cells, we have here also yin and yang and the five elements, like nutrition is made by the Golgi apparatus, respiration by mitochondria, reproduction chromosomes, regeneration by vitamins, antioxidants, enzymes, ribosomes here, and so on. Okay, so I'll go faster to this one. Then here is the immune system. Let's speak a bit on this one. The immune system is made by all these uh, tissues and by all the cells which are uh, traveling uh, usually in the body. We have the lymph nodes, the appendix here, the bone marrow, which produces the white blood cells, the red bone marrow. We have around the intestines, the pears patches, patches, which are protecting the body against the very possible, very dangerous possible bacteria, pathogen bacteria. And by the way, one reason why we need a very healthy diet is that a healthy diet, a clean diet, a fresh diet will maintain the digestive system in good shape. The microbiome will be good, will be healthy. So then the lymphocytes, lymphocytes which are around the intestines in these pear patches will not be anymore so under stress. Uh, less amount, less number of white blood cells will stay in this area because the area becomes healthy and uh, good functioning. So the lymphocytes will be able to travel in the, all over the body to protect the body, including against Borrelia or against other co-infections. Then we have the spleen, the thymus, the tonsils, the adenoids, which are here. So we need to protect the body against possible co-infections, which comes from outside like COVID-19, like SARS-CoV-2, by gargling here with honey and propolis, by using small amounts of essential oils if it's needed. Okay, so uh, if you go to the cells level, 
The immune system is made initially by a stem cell and the stem cells needs telomerase. And remember telomerase is present in bee pollen. And uh, we, then it goes to lymphoid stem cells, myeloid progenitor, and then it goes on this uh, differentiation. And basically to be healthy, we need every single kind of cell from these types uh, to protect ourselves. And the idea is that all the cells are traveling in all these uh, immune system tissues and organs. And um, uh, the idea is that each of these cells of the immune system, they need good nutrition, good oxygen, good detox, good water, good regeneration, good energy, good information, coordination, and so on. So the categories I told you before must be present to every single type of cell which you see here. Okay. Good. So the dark iron principle I already told you. And again, this idea that the immune system, which is now here in the center, uh, needs the functioning of all these organs uh, and tissues in good, good order and good uh, enough uh, amount and so on. And uh, basically, if we all these organs are good, the immune system is good and then Borrelia is going out. Again, now on the B products against the uh, cell, uh, for the cells, the B venom helps the blood flow and lymphatic flow around the cells. So in low amount, of course, it will help to maintain the healthy cells. Honey comes with energy, especially, and also some polyphenols, which helps the antioxidant function. Propolis comes with a lot of antioxidants, but also antivirus, antibacterial, and so on. Uh, propolis can destroy also the Borrelia much faster destroys the B venom, the Borrelia. Uh, very, very small amount of B venom destroys the Borrelia. But with the B venom, there are more problems because B venom is very, very powerful and it may cause allergies or other adverse reactions. So it's not so easy to, to work with it is if you are not working with a good specialist in B venom therapy. Royal gel is very good for the cell regeneration, for the division, for the nucleus, but also for protection inside of the organites, of the restructuring and so on. And B pollen, it's uh, fantastic for the structure and functioning because it comes basically with everything, everything the cell needs to be happy. Uh, practically, uh, the pollen, it's in itself a cell, but it's, it's a cell of vegetable origin. So we are treating with vegetal cells, our own cells, when you take uh, B pollen. Okay, so uh, again, this concept that one cell helps all the other cells in the body and all other cells in the body helps every single cell. Okay, and again, the concepts, the categories, quantities, intensity, quality. Here are another slide uh, which says that in the universe, everything is interconnected um, in the universe, but also in our body. And roles of the high products, uh, to sum up uh, all this uh, I told you before, we need all B products to have these functions uh, okay, to make, uh, once the cells are happy, then the immune system is happy. And uh, we are nourishing the body, we are helping the structure of the body, but in the same time, we fight directly against the Borrelia. So uh, the antibiotics cannot in the same time destroy Bor Bor Borrelia and nourish the body. So the B products, uh, most of them, except for B venom, are in the same time foods and medicines. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, your patience. And uh, uh, I used some slides several times. I'm sorry about this, uh, but now we can go to the questions. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to to, to write down in the chat area, you, you wrote. Ah, oh, yeah, I, I see some, some. Okay, uh, Simon, um, you, did you select some, some uh, questions or? Oh, we don't have any question yet on the chat. If you okay. guys want to uh, ask questions, uh, I, I suggest you raise your hand so that you can unmute yourself and then you can ask the question. How about that? Yes. If nobody wants to ask questions, I have four or five questions written down here myself. Do you guys mind me asking the first question? Can you, 
Can you hear me well? Yes. Can you yes. Yeah. So I have several questions for you, Dr. Stephan. Yes. The first one, you mentioned medicinal herbs. What are they? What are the most powerful feel which you can tell us? So what are the purposes of these medicinal herbs? Are they for the detoxification or are they for nutritional values or more? And the second one is... Um, wait, 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 wait. wait uh, <laughs> let, let me answer one by one. Because oh, okay. I, I don't have here, uh, I, I will take us the paper. But uh, uh, very, very good question. So we can use medicinal herbs for all these purposes. So the first one is, of course, to destroy Borrelia. And there are medicinal herbs which are very good antibacterial, uh, like thyme. Thyme is very good antibacterial. Eucalyptus, and in principle, any spicy food or spicy herbs, they are powerful antibacterial. But more powerful antibacterial antiborrelia than the herb itself is the extract from the herb, the essential oil. For example, if you take thyme oil, or you take from the garlic, you take uh, garlic essential oil and several other oils, they are more powerful than the herb itself. Okay, then we can use, and the best is to use medicinal herbs with honey, because when you put in honey, you mix in honey, then uh, this mixture, honey plus herb, is better absorbed into the bloodstream because the, the villia in the small intestine, they are happy when honey comes to absorb easier these uh, parts of the medicinal herbs. Then, so first role, antiborrelia, medicinal herbs. Second role is to make the immune system more powerful. And the uh, herbs, which are more spicy, they make the tongue uh, red. You'll feel the heat in the, in the mouth. So it will warm up the body. You know, when you take uh, chili, you'll get sweating uh, because of the heat, okay? So well, once you get more heat in the body, the immune system is activated. It's the same mechanism like in the case of fever. Fever, When you have an infection like COVID-19 or any other kind of infection, not only us, all animals, all birds, even fish, in case of infection, they get fever. So fever is good to fight the bacteria and so on and so on, and also to activate the immune system, okay? So anything which will increase the heat in the body, uh, like the herbs, but also maybe sauna, moxibustion, and so on and so on. Exercise, uh, we can help for this one. And the third role of the medicinal herbs is to fight also co-infections, other infections, but I already told you generally before. And the other one is to maintain the functioning of all those organs in good activity. Remember, I said that in order for the immune system to work, you need a good liver. But the liver depends also on the gallbladder. And there are medicinal herbs, very good for the gallbladder functioning. Sometimes the gallbladder is full of stones or the mud, and it's very lazy, cannot work. So if the gallbladder has a problem, the liver also will have a problem in taking out the bile, the toxins from the liver. So to improve the functioning of the gallbladder, medicinal herbs, usually bitter herbs, are very good. Also, we have medicinal herbs to help the kidneys to have this diuretic effect, like eliminating the urine faster. Okay, so it helps the detox of the water soluble components. Then we have medicinal herbs, which helps the lungs to breathe. Remember without good breathing, we have no oxygen, no oxygen, no strong immune system. So there are medicinal herbs which are helping the lungs like eucalyptus, eucalyptus flowers or leaves or essential oils, but also mustard and many others are good for the lungs. And there are also medicinal herbs good for the heart, like crategus or hawthorn in English, crategus monogena, crategus oxyacanta, which are helping the functioning of the heart. Yes. Okay, so for the medicinal herbs, ideally is to ask a local specialist in herbs. Just go to the nearest specialist, good specialist in herbs. And usually the practitioners of traditional Chinese medicine and of Ayurveda, they know very well the medicinal herbs, or also in your area, you, you go to the nearest university, uh, to the pharmacy uh, faculty, 
in the pharmacy faculty, you'll find the pharmacognosy department. And in the pharmacognosy department, they are the good, the best specialists in the medicinal herbs. They can orient you on what the herbs will be the best for you as a patient. Okay, second question, Ruth. Uh, before I go for the second question, I don't know if you guys uh, not from Australia can will be able to get an access to this, a copy of this book. And this book contains a lot of um, medicinal herbs there. Uh, it's called, how can I use herbs in my daily life? So I give you explanation and also uh, cases. So it's very easy to find a, a copy in Australia, but I'm not sure about you guys. Um, maybe you can go to this website, have a look. And this is the ISBN. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can send by, by email. That, that is, this is a very, a very <laughs> good book and Simon use it all the time. And the second question is, yes. um, so we know, we know that we have to use all kinds of beehive products to treat Lyme disease, but should we, how, how can we, is there any sequence? Shall we start with honey first or honey with, with populace together or pollen first? And what are the, what, is there any sequence uh, okay. by taking all these uh, beehive products to target Lyme disease? Yes, very good question. Another very good question, Ruth. Thank, thank you very much. So the, the general rule, the golden rule, whenever we use a new product, a new food, uh, or a new method, is to start with very small dose to check for the tolerance. Okay, if I uh, would go, for example, to acupuncture, I will not make the first session 30 uh, acupuncture needles on myself. First, I test with only one needle. So in our in the B products, the most known and the better accepted product, B product is honey. So it's good to start with honey. And here is to find the big secret is to find which is the best honey for me. Uh, the best honey for me uh, or the best honey is not the one which you see in advertising. There are some people who says my honey is the best honey in the world. But the best honey for me is the one which makes me happy which improves my functioning and diminishes the disease. How to know what is the best honey for you? Is uh, you take a small amounts, uh, let's say 20 grams uh, for two, three days in a row from one type of honey. For example, you start with linden honey and three days you eat only this honey. And in, after three days, you give a note, a mark uh, to this honey. You say this honey, was excellent for me. I give Mark 10. We, we say Mark 10 in Europe, in United States, they say A, you give an A, okay? Or, but if the honey was so-so, you say, oh, I give five or six the mark, or if it was very bad, it caused me bloating or pains or anything which was not, not nice in my body, then you'll give a very low degree, a low mark or, or low, low note, okay? And um, uh, I give you just one short example in my own family. I love all kinds of honeys, uh, not all kinds of honeys, but most of the honeys. But my wife loves only one type of honey. <laughs> she likes only uh, the honey which is made in Turkey and Bulgaria. She likes chestnut honey. And chestnut honey is very bitter. And uh, when I take chestnut honey, I say, oh, I don't like it. But my wife said, wow, it's fantastic. Bring me more, bring me more. Yeah? Because her metabolism, her body, her needs are different than my needs. Okay? So each of us, we need to find out which is the best honey for me. And then the best system is which is the best propolis for me. Is Brazilian propolis, green propolis, is red propolis, is poplar propolis, is propolis from... Uh, from Mediterranean seas, from Italy, from Spain, and so on. So ideally is to get more propolis uh, in our pharmacy, more, more propolis types, and then to check. Of course, uh, the scientists will help you. They can put the Borrelia in the propolis, let's say from Turkey or from Romania into the Petri dish. And they'll say, okay, this propolis from Romania is the best against Borrelia, or the best one is from Japan. 
So, but you can establish with your own body uh, intuitively if you want. You listen to the body. When I take, for example, a propolis, which is good against my Lyme disease, I'll see that the symptoms diminishes. I feel better. I do not have any more pains. Uh, but when I take another kind of propolis, I do not have these improvements. So this means that I did not find the right propolis for me. Okay. And same method is for B pollen. Uh, those of you who knows the different B pollens, uh, 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 most of you do you know about the polyfloral pollen, which is a mixture of all pollens. But it's a huge difference between the tastes of pollen. If you have the curiosity to separate the pollen according to the colors, for example, red pollen, yellow pollen, uh, blue pollen, uh, uh, black pollen, and then you taste separately these uh, different pollens, you see huge differences. And uh, it's more evident than the differences between the honeys because uh, the amount of active components in pollen is more, so concentration is more, so the effect is more powerful. In honey, it's like uh, a bath of uh, water and carbohydrates and small amounts of active components. And they are not so powerful in taste, but in pollen, very powerful. So uh, how to find the best pollen? Again, you, you ask the beekeepers to get you monopollens, so you ask the beekeepers, please give me as monopollen as possible. Like, uh, of course, the pollen will have some mixtures of other pollens from other flowers. But if it's like 90% pollen from that plant, then it's, you can say it's a monopollen. There are methods to separate uh, the pollen according to the colors with special devices. Uh, you need to freeze the pollen before, and then you can separate it. And then uh, you check it what is the best for you, OK? So then, so the order would be like this, the best order. First honey, let's, let's do it like this. First honey, then honey do honey. Then third will be royal jelly, small amount, less than one gram first time. Apilar nil will be after royal jelly because it's also a food like ancestral food. Then you can use bee bread, which is a transformed pollen, which is less aggressive, let's say, than bee pollen. Sometimes bee pollen is a bit aggressive. Bee bread, which is less allergenic. Then bee pollen. And the last one will be propolis. And the very last one will be bee venom. So this is the best sequence. Uh, uh, bee venom is extremely powerful and it has its own dangers. And uh, it should be uh, uh, used only by the specialist in acupuncture and the specialist who knows how to treat an anaphylactic shock, how to prevent the anaphylactic shock and so on. And propolis, I put it the, uh, before the last one because propolis is highly concentrated in polyphenols, much more than in honey and then in pollen. And it has also substances which may trigger allergies. So, but if you go in this order, this is the softest and the, let's say the safest order. And if it, everything is okay with each of these uh, products, then you can start combinations. And then you can gradually increase the dose from all of these products, step-by-step step increase the dose until the best effect is reached. Okay? Yes. Third question. Well, uh -huh. I yeah. have uh, two more questions, but one of our, one of our participants, Nicola, uh, she asked, can we eat bee, pol uh, bee venom? Can yes. we take it orally? Yes, yes, you can take it. Uh, in, of course, very, very small amount. First of all, uh, sometimes when the beekeepers, they are centrifugating the honey very, very quickly. In the room where they are centrifugating the honey, sometimes comes also bees and the bees can be crushed into the honey. So the final honey has also small amounts of bee venom. So we can add bee venom to honey. And uh, the best way to do it is to ask a specialist to have the bee venom solution where we know exactly what is the concentration of bee venom in that solution. For example, there are 20 bee stings equivalent, 20 bee stings, which will be like two milligram of uh, bee venom, uh, dried bee venom, two milligram into one milliliter of the solution of the 
distilled water or physiological water, uh, physiological serum, so saline solution. So uh, you have a well-known concentration of B-venom, and from that one, you can pull out with a syringe, uh, at the beginning, just half of a bee sting equivalent, or one bee sting equivalent. Then you put in, let's say, 20 milliliter of honey, and this will be a big dilution. Or if you are a bit fearful, you can put in 100 milliliter of honey, and then dilute it very, very well. And then from this one, you take just a small drop. So it will be like one to 1,000 dilution. Okay, and then uh, you check, you keep it under the tongue. You keep it for, let's say, one minute, more than one minute, you cannot do it because the honey attracts a lot of saliva, and then you swallow. But before you do this, you need to have anti-allergy kit near you, like antihistamine, cortisone, and adrenaline. In case something happens, uh, you need to go to the allergist to the hospital as soon as possible. And of course, you need to check uh, all your body and this method with the venom, as I said, it should be the last, very last one, if all the other methods didn't work. And there is, uh, there are companies like I know one very good in South America and Uruguay, which is, are making B venom in tablets, like homeopathical uh, tablets, and uh, they, they, you take it under the tongue. So uh, the big advantage of this method is that it gives no pain, and the risk of allergy is very, very small because the B venom in the tablet is, uh, first of all, it's very, very much diluted. And second, when we swallow, the enzymes from B venom, which are hyaluronidase and phospholipase A2, the most important ones, they are destroyed by the acids from the stomach, the acids and the other enzymes from stomach, which are proteolytic. So the risk of allergy is extremely, extremely small when we swallow the venom, okay? But the other substances from venom, like melitin, will be able to go uh, or through the sublingual mucosa partially, and then it will play its role against the Borrelia. Melitin is very, very powerful against Borrelia. There are studies, uh, one is named 1997, Lupke and Garon published, and another one is more recent in 2017, uh, yes, from a group of uh, researchers from the United States, um, which uh, was led by a lady called Eva, Eva something. <laughs> okay, and they, they, they demonstrated that the melatonin and the venom is very powerful against Borrelia. Okay, yes. Uh, um, there's another question from, uh, from Yuji. Um, he asked, how beneficial is sauna? Oh, two, two questions from Yuji. Uh, the, oh, sorry, one question from uh, Wenja, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, from another participant, and he said that which B products is best for brain or brain cell stimulation? Okay. Uh, so best, this one, yes, for the stimulation of the brain cells, uh, the best stimulation of the brain cells is, of course, done by... Uh, by the B venom. So there is nothing more powerful than B venom to stimulate the brain because when you get a B sting, uh, your brain goes very, very fast because you need to know where to run. <laughs> I want to run where I find the best way. Where is my house? Where is the door? So you need to run very fast. So the brain must activate its functioning. And also the lungs are starting to breathe more powerful. The heart beats more powerful to go out of this uh, stressful situation. So B venom is very powerful for this, but of course, in the case of Lyme disease, we need to start with very small doses, check for the tolerance, check for the allergy, go with the softer methods like combined with honey. And then uh, we can use also B venom in cream form, B venom cream or B venom ointment. We can apply on acupuncture points. And there are such ointments in Canada, in the United States, in Romania, Hungary, there are many producers of B-venom creams. And then you apply on the acupuncture points, the ones which are sensitive to pressure, then you make massage. And then you think to the bees. <laughs> you think in the then your nervous system is activated. But uh, here is another point. Uh, it's not enough only to activate the brain. 
the act to activate the brain is easy. I give a, like this and it's activated. But you need to help the structure of the brain too, like the structure of the brain. And this you can do only with amino acids, with fats, with carbohydrates, with minerals, with vitamins and so on, which are helping the regeneration of the brain itself. So here you need all the other products. For the stimulation is B-Venom, but for regeneration, you need B-Pollen, B-Bread, Royal Jelly is very good for the neural stem cells, uh, the stem cells in the brain. With Royal Jelly, they are stimulated to develop, to multiply and to differentiate. Uh, it's, it's a study done in Japan in the years 2003, uh, which proved that Royal Jelly helps the stem cells from the brain. And then you need, of course, honey for the energy and propolis for the protection of the brain against the free radicals, against bacteria, and so on and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the other question was on sauna. On sauna, uh, in the case of sauna, of course, here you need to do it. Sauna is like a treatment method. So the medical doctor, local medical doctor, will decide with yes or no. Uh, if it's if the Borrelia is everywhere, it's an aggressive uh, phase. It may be not so good to, to do sauna because this may help the, the Borrelia to spread even more. But if uh, the, the Borrelias are more or less located, you can do uh, even a local sauna, which is just to hit that area. For example, if the right knee is affected, you put heat on the right knee. Okay, and so if the Borrelia is more or less under control, you can start with sauna. But again, here you apply the golden principle of the dose of the intensity. You first you do dry sauna one minute and then you go out and you check how is your body. And uh, let's say a couple of hours later, you go, you stay two minutes, three minutes. So you increase very, very slowly the time of staying in the sauna until you find what is the best time for you. Ideally is to stay as long as possible, but you need to be very well hydrated before. You need to take all beehive products before. And this is by the way, another trick in uh, apitherapy against Lyme disease is before, before you attack the Borrelia uh, with the antibiotics, for example, that you can change uh, various antibiotics. Uh, you need also to uh, use propolis and essential oils, medicinal herbs. So you take them orally. It will take some time until they arrive all over the body, let's say 30 minutes, and then you start the heat. So uh, this concept is um, the concept of opening the door to the, to the postman, <laughs> like knock, knock on the door. You know, somebody comes and delivers you uh, the, the letters, how do you call this, the, the mail? And the mailman, the postman, the mailman comes and makes knock, knock to the door. And then you open the door and you get that letter. Same is here. If the uh, Borrelia is located in the knees, uh, you want to open the blood vessels which are coming to the knees, but when your blood is already rich in anti-Borrelia substances. So you, you propolize your body, you get enough honey, you get enough B-venom, you get, if it's necessary, antibiotics, you get essential oils, and then uh, the Borrelia is hidden there, then you open the door to the Borrelia. So you need to go deep. So you open the door there by opening the blood vessels and improving the uh, lymphatic flow. And then you destroy the Borrelia much faster. Okay, good. Other, other questions? Uh, let me check, sorry. <clears throat> I see one more here. Oh, just thank you. And um, this person have to leave. So. So back to my question, I have two more questions, sorry guys. Um, let me have a look. So um, I, uh, it's something to do with militant. So I read a research paper saying that bee, the bee stings doesn't have enough melatonin there. It's better to use the, um, the, the syringe, the uh, bee venom solution because be the venom solution prepared commercially will have enough militant to tackle uh, be Lyme disease. So, so this is one of the questions. Okay, 
Okay. Um, uh, the, bee, the bees, the live bees, they usually have more melitine than the uh, injectable solutions, usually, uh, because it's fresh. But here it depends also on the age of the bee. Uh, the young, the teenagers bees, the guard bees, they have more venom uh, because their function is to protect the colony against the invaders. So, but the old bees or the very young bees, they have less venom usually. Okay, but the problem with the live bees is that the live bees, they contain also hyaluronidase and phospholipase A2, a bit high amount. And these two substances and also melitin, they are allergenics. They have a, a tendency to cause to trigger an allergy. So, but the injectable venom has usually less enzymes. And there are methods used by top, top laboratories to diminish this uh, amount of enzymes. They do not want to have problems with phospholipase A2 or hyaluronidase. So they have methods to take out these enzymes. And then uh, only or uh, not only because there are some other substances, but melitin will be more concentrated. Now, the idea to inject melitin, it's possible just melitin, only melitin. There are laboratories, companies which can produce melitin synthetically or separated biologically but it's extremely, extremely uh, expensive. It's like one gram is 7,000 euro, something like this. So it's not practical. And uh, as long as we have melitin into the living bees, the bee venom, uh, and then in the solutions, we do not need to buy this extremely expensive. And anyway, here is, I have another point. I usually do not like to, to go like pharma industry is going with all mono substances. Because if I go, I take from venom only one substance and I use it, I do not take the other ones. I do not have the synergy between all the substances. So this is known in phytotherapy or herbal medicine. Uh, I have better effects with the whole herb, the extract uh, like a tincture, for example, from a whole herb, than if I take only one substance. And there are also in case, case of the products, I have quercetin into propolis, Quercetin is antibacterial, antiviral, antioxidant, but propolis as a total extract is better antioxidant, better antiviral, antibacterial than only quercetin. So same, same applies for the melitin. And um, yeah, so uh, there are many advantages and disadvantages between these two methods. Uh, the people practitioners, which are not medical doctors, they prefer to use these things. And uh, if they are coordinated by their local doctors, they are doing a good job. But if they just learn uh, in internet somewhere and then they start uh, a lot of these things, they may get in trouble because of adverse reactions from the venom. And the, the doctors, the therapists, they prefer the injections, the injectable solutions, because they know exactly what is there, how much is the concentration. They can dilute it as much as they want like they can dilute 100 times dilution, but with the bee stings, it's more difficult. In the case of bee stings, you need to do micro stings. So instead of full sting, like let the stinger five minutes, you let it only one second or two seconds. So you'll get also uh, less amount, but sometimes the bee wants to sting you very fast, <laughs> very aggressive. Sometimes uh, when he, the bee is pissed off, is nervous, but and sometimes she doesn't want to sting you. So this, there is a lot of variable here. So one way to do it, like I'm recommending to my patients, is you buy a B venom solution, uh, injectable B venom solution. There are companies which are selling this. Then you go to your local doctor and then you say, please look, I have a diluted B venom here. It's not more allergenic than uh, aspirin, than uh, peanuts, uh, whatever, penicillin and so on and so on. And you can give some studies. And then could you please dilute this venom more if you want and then make intradermal, like intradermal injection, like simulating the bee sting. And then the doctor will do it. The doctor knows how to prevent an anaphylactic shock, how to treat an anaphylactic shock. You are in a protected environment. And then you go with the, these injections for let's say 10 sessions, 20, 30 sessions like this with the doctor. And if the evolution of the disease is very good, you do not need any more bee stings. But if the evolution of the injectable bee venom is not good enough, then you think, okay, let's add live bees. And then you start with micro bee stings, 
then you increase gradually, gradually the, the dose, but again, protected by your local doctors, naturopathic doctors and so on. And uh, if you do like this, uh, you, you'll be on the safe way. Okay. So let me check question. I don't see question from the chat. So could I ask two more questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes, of course, of course, of course. So the question is, um, we know that ah. we have- Oh, sorry, 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 Ruth. I see that uh, Professor Banu Uchel has a question. She oh. raised the hand. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, sorry yes. about that. Uh, Hello, everybody from Turkey. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, I have to leave for a while. But uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Simon and Ruth, for this nice organization. And also, I would like to offer my great thanks to Dr. Stefan uh, for this excellent presentation and open mind, open heart, and always share his very valuable knowledge to the worldwide about apotherapy. I would like to thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bani Yusel. Okay. Uh, thank you. See you then. Bye bye. Oh, okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, I I see somebody. Uh, ben, you Ben, you uh, raise her, her hand as well. Okay. Uh, uh, Gary. Gary. Oh no. Um, oh, it's gone. The hand is gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so the hand is gone. So, um, my yes. <laughs> yes, yes, your question now, Ruth. Very good. I love so, questions. So for the, for the bee venom, we know that we need to start from the very um, small dose and then add up to, add up to, to a certain amount. Would there be any maximum dosage? Will there okay. be any over? Okay, okay. So uh, here, what happened? First of all, the bee venom itself, when it's a high, too high uh, amount, it becomes, of course, toxic. It can cause its toxicity for the nervous system, for the nervous ganglions, and so on. Also, too high quantity of the venom will make the red blood cells explode. Which, 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 which it will call a phenomenon which is called hemolysis. And when the red blood cells are broken, they'll block the kidneys. So it's, it is possible a big problem. Okay, the venom itself can be also allergenic. We know about this. But there is another thing interesting in the case of Borrelia is when you destroy too much Borrelia, too many Borrelia in a short period of time, Borrelia itself has a lot of toxins. It's poisonous, if you want, for the body. So when parts of Borrelia, which is destroyed, is cut by the bee venom, comes too much into the blood or the, the leaf, it will cause a too strong reaction, very strong reaction, uh, which is caused not by the Borrelia, which is still living, but by these toxins, which are released when the Borrelia is killed, okay? So if you cause two big reactions, uh, you do not want to cause these big reactions. So the strategy is to kill the Borrelia step-by-step, step, gradually, step-by-step step to kill the Borrelia. Uh, when they go out from their protection, uh, they use a kind of, they stay in kind of a kist uh, or a cyst, and they, they stay also in biofilms. So, but they need to go out from time to time to multiplicate. So they cannot stay like that. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, so they, they cannot stay uh, uh, like a bear into the cave. Uh, they must go out. And when they go out, this is a very important point. When they go out, the Borrelia, they get this shape like you saw, like this one, spirochet kind of shape. And in this phase, they are sensitive. They are uh, fragile. They can be destroyed by antibiotics, by essential oils, by propolis, by bee venom, and so on. But when they stay in a kist, they cannot be destroyed by antibiotics, and it's difficult also for the bee products to destroy them. So, what is the strategy? The general strategy is to make the body full of bee products, take all these herbs, take the essential oils, take a good nutrition, sleep a lot, 
be happy, not be stressful uh, or st stressed, okay? And then wait calmly for the Borrelia to come out from their uh, hidden places. And each Borrelia when it comes out and in the blood, in the leaf, it's a lot of anti-Borrelia substances, the Borrelia will be killed. Some of them will feel that they are attacked, they'll go back to protection, like into the joints. But sooner or later, they'll come again. So basically what we need is to use these bee products non-stop, practically non-stop, like honey, propolis, pollen, real jelly, bee venom, non-stop, essential oils non-stop, until all Borrelia are killed or until the number of Borrelia is so small that the immune system itself can eliminate it without a uh, problem, okay? So here is some people, they say, Oh, I cannot take royal jelly nonstop for a long time because many people they say royal jelly should be taken in cures, like two weeks, three weeks, one month, or pollen also in cures. But this is valid for, let's say, normal people. But in the case of people with Borrelia, uh, Lyme disease, which is very dangerous, this rule is not anymore active. So we should use nonstop the B products. And what we can do. If a certain product, uh, when we take it and we feel that it's not so good, it gives us some, some bad symptoms, then we can replace that uh, B product with another B product of the same kind. For example, if pollen from a certain tree, like willow, willow tree pollen, is, give, uh, it is not anymore good for us, the taste, then we can replace it with another pollen from another tree. Also, we can replace the honey types. So I go one month with this honey, then I go to another honey. So if we rotate the B products types, but we maintain the, the dose, we are okay. Maybe we can make one day break per week. One day per week, let's say Sunday, we make a break. But then we listen to the body. And if we see that in that one day break, uh, the Borrelia starts to be again active to uh, get us pains and so on, it means that, oh, we should not make any break, okay? But if the break is silent, is good, no symptoms, then okay, we go to uh, six days per week like this. And then maybe later on, we do five days per week, the B products and the rest. Yes? So let me check if, uh, oh, we have two checks here. Oh, so just uh, they're leaving and thank you very much. And and uh, just Thank good you. presentation and organization. So there's not questions. Let me, Simon have a question. I have yes. a question, Steph. <laughs> Steph yes, Simon. What, what will make the Borrelia excited in the body in terms of nu nutrition? When, uh, I'm thinking something, uh, um, maybe sugar is something that will make the Borrelia excited and cause more inflammation. Uh, so that would be a, maybe a food to, uh, substance to limit, stay away from. Uh, what is the experience or knowledge on that? Okay, so uh, good question. Good question also, Simon. Um, uh, the Borrelia, it's a bacteria. And as all bacteria, they need all kinds of nutrients, like all the cells in our body too. So they need sweet, like carbohydrates, they need amino acids, they need proteins, minerals, water, and so on and so on. Uh, but what, what is more important is uh, what kind of foods are making an environment for them, which is better for them. And uh, uh, they like those foods which are making a, an environment which is sticky, uh, with, like gluten, like cheese, uh, cold, and it was mucus. So they like this kind of environment because the, uh, the immune system and the antibiotics cannot go through. That's why they, they make, and not only Borrelia, several other bacteria, in order to protect themselves, they, they group together in what is so-called biobiology, biofilm. It's like, maybe you saw sometimes uh, also in your garden, if you have a, uh, uh, a tube where it's running water slowly, slowly. Then uh, at the, the end of the tube, or when it's the exit of the tube, you'll see there a green thing uh, being produced. 
okay? So it's like a mucus, it's like gelatinous. So they, there are bacteria together and it's the principle like in the biology and zoology, the safety is in numbers. Like the fish, they come thousands together, they are better protected. In Africa, the antelopes, the GNU, they take say 1 million antelopes, they are better, better protected against the, the lions and so on. So the Borrelia, when they go in this biofilm, they produce calcium and some other minerals they create like a physical barrier uh, and they stay inside the cells. It's like a labyrinth and uh, made by this calcium. And the, 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 uh, this uh, biofilm cannot be broken by antibiotics, but our honey and the propolis and the bee venom can go into the biofilm and destroy the biofilm. So uh, this is a very, very good advantage we have with the bee products. And about uh, an example of biofilm in our case is that this biofilm uh, between the teeth, how do you call this between the teeth? Uh, I don't Black. What? Black? Plaque, 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 dental plaque, something like this. Yeah, dental plaque, yes. So it's uh, also the bacteria from the mouth. They are constantly attacked by the toothpaste Sometimes uh, people, they take special solutions, which are very powerful antibacterial, but the bacteria, they hide between the teeth, sometimes in cavities, and they make this uh, protection of the calcium, this plaque, okay? So same strategy is used by Borrelia inside the body when they are under attack. But uh, what is the good news is that in comparison with the antibiotics, which are having no effects, you know, there are millions of people which are taking antibiotics useless, they have no effects. When they use uh, bee products like propolis, like bee venom, essential oils, they go through the biofilm and they kill the, the bacteria even inside the biofilm. But when, when the, the bacteria, they go out of the biofilm, they are easy to destroy even better, okay? Yes. Let me check. Um... No, from the, no question from the check. Let me see if any hands raised. So no hands raised. So um, I got the last question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, forgot where it is. Um, okay, so if anybody so, else would like, yeah. yeah. Yes. No, I, remember where it is. I got a lot of question marks, but I don't know which one is the, the question. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, so, oh, I know. I know, Dr. Stefan. So you said that uh, bee venom, yang, populous yin, honey yin, how about pollen bee bread? What are hmm. they? And royal jelly, are they yin or yang? Uh, royal jelly is definitely yin. It has a lot of water. It has substances which are helping the regeneration of the cells. So uh, royal jelly is a water element and it has some characteristics which are okay with the wood element. So th that is the, the, the part for royal jelly. Of course, royal jelly has substances which are activating the blood flow, helps the blood flow. It, even it can stimulate a bit the vasodilation, but the main function is the regeneration. And think to the bees, uh, the queen, she receives every five minutes or so royal jelly and she can lay 2,000 eggs in a day, or sometimes 3,000 eggs in a day. So royal jelly is very, very good for this. And bee pollen, it's a, the wood element. It's between yin and yang. So uh, between, it's like if you want more or less neutral. It's a, a good source of uh, uh, wood for the fire. So it helps the, the fire. So it's like the mother for fire. And also it has vegetal elements, uh, which is more for the in for the multiplication. Okay. And the bee bread? The bee bread and is the, the bee... same, in the same area bee bread. Now bee bread is more acidic. So bee bread is a bit more young than bee pollen. Yes, from the acidity point of view, because acid is fire, acid is young. Yes. 
And Simon just wrote on my notebook, he said that beehive air. How about beehive air? Beehive air is on the metal element, it's very thin, very, very volatile. It's mainly in. So uh, it has oxygen, of course, but it has also carbon dioxide. And the effect in the lungs is usually uh, more in its anti-inflammatory, but uh, it is also antibacterial a bit, and it's also bronchodilatatory. So uh, uh, I, I, it's a good question. <laughs> it's something between in and yang. So it's a combination of both of them. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking about yin and yang, the air is more yang than the matter, like the ground, the earth. So uh, I would say it's more yang than yin, more yang than yin behind there. Yes? So let me double check. Uh, oh, this one checked. Uh, oh, just thank you very much. Just, just uh, Christine said Chris, that Chris. thank you very much. Simon and Stefan. So let me see if any hands raised. I don't see any any hands at the moment. So that's all for me. So the what is the the most active time in terms of uh, seasons? Uh, summer, winter, spring for the Borella to have um, the most activity. Uh, varroa, uh, like Borrelia too, if you want, or like Cancer, uh, Varroa likes uh, a bit cold. Uh, if Varroa do not like heat, uh, excessive heat. Uh, there is one professor in Vienna, in Austria, and he was in uh, the course when he had been to Romania, Wolfgang Wimmer. Maybe you remember he made that device with hyperthermia. So it's like a, a box. And you put the, the frames with the cells and with the bees with Varroa. And then he creates perfectly a dry sauna. So he, he put the temperature to 42, 43 degrees Celsius. And the bees, the larvae, are not uh, destroyed by the heat, but the Varroa is destroyed by this heat. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, practically, you can say, OK, Varroa should diminish in the summertime. And in, in Australia, you have dried summers. So it should diminish. But the problem is that inside the colony, it's a ventilation, good ventilation. The breeze brings the water. So the real temperature in the colony is not more than maybe 39 or 40 degrees Celsius. And this is not enough to destroy the varroa. So you need from time to time to use this hyperthermia, like a two hour session, a dried sauna, with the device from, from, Professor, uh, from Professor Wolfgang Wimmer. Yeah. Or use other methods. Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, very good, very good. I, yes. I want, I want to share one, one question from a customer who asked uh, to see if we have any populous, uh, just like the populous air, so you can like an infusion because see if we are selling it or not because his her doc his I think her doctor advised her to get rid of the mold uh, around her by using propolis. Propolis in the propolizer. Yeah, that's right. And I think she has the Lyme disease. And she, her, do her doctor advised her to get rid of the mold around her. So she wants to buy this, um, this popularizer uh, yes. from us, but we don't have any. But it, it is possible for us to like put essential oil, but we put popular tincture there and instead of essential oil to do the popularizer. Uh, Can we do it? Yeah, okay, in the propolizer, that is that cylinder, that small cylinder, okay? Yeah. Okay, so if you still have cylinders or the customers, they have the cylinders, uh, once the, the, what is inside is used, they can clean it, they can scratch it a bit, they can put acetone. Acetone is uh, very good to di di dissolve the propolis, then put in water many, many times until it's very clean again. 
And then you can ask Simon to give him raw propolis, raw propolis from your beehives. And then you'll put in the tube, but only half of it, of the tube, not completely, just 50%, because the raw propolis has also wax inside and beeswax with heat dilates more. So it will go out of the capsule and then it will damage the electrical part of the device. But if you feel they will feel it only 50%, then the, this raw propolis, it has also good essential oils. So it will be also useful. Another idea I can send you, Ruth Perimail. There is another producer of uh, uh, like propolizer in Slovenia where, where it can put directly the raw propolis, like a chunk of raw propolis. You can put it on that plate and uh, then it will propolize the air much more powerful than the Italian mm -hmm. one. The Italian one is also very good, but if you need more power, then it's the Slovenian one, and it's called Propostin. Let, let me write here on the chat uh, for Propostin. And you, you ask uh, for the latest version of the device. And this is from Slovenia. Yes. Propostin. Yeah. Slovenia. Oh. And I, I can also even put a, a computer, a, an image of it. I hope I can find it quickly. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I do now uh, in this moment, but uh, let me check this one. Ah, yeah, I found it. Okay, so it's uh, like this one. Okay. So you can check in the chat area. Okay. Good. Um, oh. Stefan, I talk about something like this. So this kind of thing is for essential oil. Yes. So inside, you put some water there and then you put some essential oil there. And once you put it back and you have the, the uh, power yes. on here, so you yes. put the power there. Can we put popless tincture by using this kind of um, yes. device? Yes, you, you can try, you can try. And propolis tincture will go easier uh, in volatile. Uh, you can also put just uh, on a on a small uh, uh, glass, like like uh, how do you call this? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, like on the on the uh, kitchen when you eat you eat from a saucer, saucer, yes, a, a small sauce. saucer uh, yeah. uh, from glass. You put first a bit of beeswax, and then you put raw propolis. Now. The important part for, to get the volatiles out of propolis, you need 80 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees, 82 degrees Celsius. This is the best temperature to get the volatiles. And it is very important to check in your device. There are thermometers, thermometers with infrared, and you check what is the temperature there. If the temperature is over 100 degrees Celsius, it may be dangerous for propolis. Uh, if it's over 120, it's already dangerous because too much heat uh, releases toxic substances. So, so creates uh, toxic substances in propolis. So ideally temperature should be around 80 degrees Celsius, plus minus five. 
And then if the thermometer tells you, oh, in the aromatherapy device, I have around 80, it's perfect. If it's less than 80, but like very, very low, like 60 degrees Celsius, maybe it is not enough to evaporate. You can make some tests, some practical tests and see what brings more aroma and nice aroma. When it's toxic, propolis, uh, because of the heat, it is very, very pungent. It's like very aggressive to the nose. Well, uh, and this, uh, it shows you that it's not a good propolis to, with this temperature. Okay. So the wax will help disperse the propolis. Yeah, yeah, right. So it is kind yeah. of uh, softening the propolis and the propolis yeah. will be spread inside the wax and the wax yeah. becomes liquid at 60 degrees Celsius. So it will help the propolis to go out, yeah. yeah. Or you can get just a propolis, which you know already from the beehive, which has enough beeswax. Yeah, but the, the idea of the propolis tincture is also good because uh, a small amount of alcohol from the tincture uh, allows a better penetration inside the body. So the alcohol, even if it has negative effects, uh, it has also this vehicle uh, effect like it is a, a transporter of the other essential oils into the body. Yes? Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you very, very much. I see that. Let me that... No. Uh, no more chat. Yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. I think we, we can close the our introduction to the apitherapy against Lyme disease. Um, I will stop recording when I close and then I hope I'll be able to get it from the cloud. And then I'll send to you uh, Simon and Ruth and then you can uh, give it to the people who are registered. Okay, yeah. and maybe yeah. later yeah. we'll also on YouTube. Yes. Indeed. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.